This is the beginning of part 3 of our module entitled FX Options Greeks, which examines in a formal way the factor sensitivities of FX options, often known as the Greeks because they are usually denoted with Greek letters by quantitative analysts. We we'll remind you that this part 3 contains chapters 5 and 6, with chapter 5 introducing Vega, Theta, and Rho, the principal remaining Greeks, and describing how a trader exploits these to express specific views, and chapter 6 containing six quiz questions to test your understanding of the materials in this module. This chapter 5 discusses the principal remaining Greeks, namely Vega, Theta, and Rho, and analyzes the risks they present to traders and the ways of making money from them. Vega, to begin with, is not in fact the letter of the Greek alphabet but is used by most practitioners because it is easy to remember its connection to volatility given its first letter. Vega measures the price change of an option given a one unit increase in implied vol. Normally defined to mean an absolute 1% increase. So to be clear, an option whose price is four dollars when implied vol is ten percent and whose premium would then rise to four and a half dollars if implied vol is reset in the formula to eleven percent would be said under this definition to have a vega of zero point five more formally we would write using the same mathematical notation as for delta and gamma Vega is the equals the partial derivative of the price with respect to the implied volatility. It bears repeating here that the sigma, the volatility we're talking about, is not necessarily connected or even close in magnitude to the actual volatility experienced at that time by the currency it is the implied volatility, i.e. the value that is implied from option prices by setting an options price equal to what the market is quoting for that option, then specifying the observable values for spot, strike, tenor, and the two interest rates, and finally solving for the single variable, sigma, whose value cannot be directly observed. To illustrate, assume we discovered that our old six-month sterling call appearing here with a strike of 1.5 is no longer in fact trading at 0.0413 as appears here with a 10% vol assumption, but rather is actually trading at 0 0.05, so almost an extra cent per pound in premium. Assuming none of the other variables have changed other than vol, we use goal seek in this worksheet to solve for the value of vol that makes the call price in cell J4 equal to, as mentioned, 0 0.05 by changing then cell F9 and we hit OK revealing a solution of vol at 12.12 percent. .12%. That is the real meaning of implied vol, the vol that is consistent with a price that is observable. Just like delta and gamma, it turns out that vega also has a closed-end formula which we have programmed here in this worksheet Vega and specifically in cells F11 and F12. 
you will note that as with gamma the same exact formulas apply in these two cells for the calls vega and for the puts vega and therefore call and put with otherwise identical terms will always have the same vega this table shows the price of our option under its three stages of moneyness i.e. when it is out of the money top row at the money middle row and in the money bottom row at vol levels of 10 percent and 11 percent which would help us visualize how much Vega each of these stages has we note that Vega appears very high when the option is at the money and pretty low when it is in the money or out of the money the best way to see that of course is to look in the last column and observe how much impact was felt by the at the money option and how little impact was felt by the other two versions of the option these characteristics of Vega match exactly those of gamma and are best remembered in a way by simply memorizing that in some sense an at the money option is most like a true option in contrast to one that is in the money especially one that is deep in the money which begins as you know to resemble a forward and one that is out of the money and especially deep out of the money which begins essentially to have no economic value at all so the vol input in a way the distinguishing characteristic of an option matters the most when the option is at the money gamma and vega have everything to do with volatility gamma in a way relating to realized volatility actual bounces up and down quick changes in the price of the spot and vega having to do with changes in the implied volatility so since gamma and vega those two Greeks are the ones most intimately tied to volatility it would seem intuitive that gamma and vega would be highest when the option is not out of the money or in the money but at the money when it is really like a true option as we did for gamma before we use solver to check that vega is indeed the highest when the option is more or less at the money thus tools solver set cell f11 the one that indicates the calls vega but it doesn't matter which equal to its maximum value by changing cell c7 which you can see right here is the spot and of course hit solve then hit ok revealing the vega is maximized when the spot is just over 15038 as is the forward which is practically exactly at the money regrettably this is another property that becomes inaccurate if we either lengthen the tenor of the option or increase vol significantly you can confirm this in your own time if you wish by means of the solver function seeking to show that the spot level at which Vega reaches its maximum increases careful this time increases if we either lengthen the tenor or increase vol or if we do both of course but we will not show this here we should issue another word of warning about the meaning of Vega similar 
to the warning we issued about Delta. Of the three states of our option analyzed above, Vega is highest in the strictly correct sense that the dollar price of the option rises most for a 1% increase in vol when spot is 150 and the option is at the money, therefore. But you should have no difficulty seeing that the percentage increase in the option premium was highest, in fact, for the out-of-the-money option, which increased in value by 75%, versus only 10% for the at-the-money option, and versus less than 1% for the in-the-money option. A risk manager is typically concerned with the absolute change in a position's value. Hence the importance of Vega properly defined to the risk management process. But for a trader expecting vol to rise, that trader would make more money assuming she has a fixed amount to invest by purchasing the out-of-the-money option. To confirm your understanding of this, take the case of a trader with $100 to invest who expects vol for sterling calls to rise from 10% to 15% very soon and confirm that she would make a profit of $671 with the six month out of the money sterling calls versus only $50 with the at the money options. Assuming of course her view proves correct. Please click the pause button while you seek the solution. This worksheet here, Vega 2, lays out the solution that involves the comparison of the Vegas essentially of these two options and is quite easy to follow. So you'll see that with a spot of 1.5 as we had established before the price of the call is 0 0.0413 which is repeated here and this enables us to purchase quite a large amount $100 divided by this 0.0413 in terms of units of the call. Then when we increase vol to 15% we find a new price of 0.0619 repeated here and can therefore calculate in the cell underneath the absolute amount of the gain simply as E17 the new price multiplied by the number of units purchased, that's the total value of these options after the increase in vol, and so what used to be $100 became $149.96, consistent therefore with a profit of $49.96. When it comes to the out-of-the-money option, which we defined as having a, well, a strike of 1.5 but when spot is only 1.2 so resetting vol at 10 confirming first that when vol when spot is 1.3 not 1.2 our option here our call which is 20 cents out of the money becomes quite cheap costing only 0 0.0008 repeated here that same hundred dollars that we previously invested in the more expensive call can now be invested in this far cheaper call enabling, enabling us to acquire a far larger number of these calls 130,000 of underlying currency units. The new price then rises upon an increase of vol to 15 percent. The new call price is now 0 0.0059 indicated here. In absolute terms, it should be pretty obvious that the more expensive call, which has just been highlighted, has risen by, in the two shaded cells now, almost exactly two cents. Whereas the cheaper call has risen in absolute units of dollars by a smaller amount, closer to one half of a cent. 
Vega therefore technically correctly defined as higher for the at the money call but more than offsetting this higher Vega is the far greater number of positions that you can take with this cheaper call on 130,000 of notional versus only 2,000 of notional using the more expensive call and therefore when we reprice these options at their new higher price the initial $100 has now actually increased to 771 making the profit 671 in absolute dollars and therefore making it absolutely clear that the trader would have made far greater profit using the cheaper lower volatility lower vega beg your pardon option the graph you see here plots Vega against different levels of the spot and summarizes our principal observations above we finish our discussion of Vega by analyzing its behavior as the option approaches expiration we ask you first to confirm your agreement with the figures for Vega indicated in this table where we have plotted different values of Vega against different levels of the spot and against different remaining tenors for the option please click pause while you do this working on the sheet labeled Vega we quickly see from this table that for both the in the money and out of the money options whose values have just been expanded as you can see on the slide Vega which was not that high in the first place over on the left with the option having half a year's tenor left quickly declined even further and became negligible close to expiration in this respect Vega is once again behaving like gamma but here the similarity ends because when it comes to the at the money option in the middle row which we have also just expanded Vega also declines as you move to the right ie as the option approaches expiration which you will recall is exactly the opposite of what gamma does remembering that gamma actually tends to infinity when it's when the option is exactly at the money is this in any way surprising absolutely not the simplest explanation is just to look at the two formulas about to appear for Vega on the left and gamma on the right and to see the term T for tenor appearing in the denominator for gamma whereas it appears in the regular part of the formula for Vega above the line as it were which explains of course gamma's tendency to increase and approach infinity as T tends towards zero whereas for Vega a diminishing value of T simply causes Vega to collapse towards zero the inevitable graph plotting Vega against the options tenor appears here and really requires very little further commentary in brown and in green we have the out of the money and the in the money options whose Vega at one year tenors is moderate and declines and then in blue we have the at the money option whose Vega one year starts quite a bit higher but also declines we remind you again that for the at the money option this is the key difference versus gamma where gamma would have exploded towards the end of the life of the option our next Greek theta is defined as the options price sensitivity to the passage of time 
often referred to also as the options time decay. The definition allows us to write theta is equal to the first partial derivative of the price with respect to tenor. We have analyzed time decay in detail previously and therefore it will require little of our attention here but we point out a couple of important differences between theta and the other Greeks. First, theta is the only Greek that describes a process that is completely predetermined, namely the passage of time. We know that each day the remaining tenor of an option will diminish by one day no more nor less. Unlike spot, vol, and interest rates, which change based on market conditions that cannot be predicted, an option's remaining tenor moves in a completely predictable manner. And second, we must carefully define our signs for the calculation of theta. As time advances, an option's remaining tenor is, of course, diminishing, and the option's price usually declines in value in response. So our formal definition of theta above would generate a positive theta in the normal case, since both numerator and denominator are negative. Most people find this confusing and prefer to talk of theta being negative in the sense that an option's value typically declines as time advances. Since this latter convention is pretty widespread, we will adopt it here. Please click pause until you are certain to have understood this point. With these two caveats out of the way, we proceed to remind you of the peculiarity of theta discussed in our previous module FX options, namely that for a European option, a point is always reached, sooner or later, at which any further extension of the tenor reduces the value rather than increasing it. To revisit this point, let's examine the sterling put with a strike of one and a half, 1.5, under exactly the same market conditions as before, except that we set the dollar interest rate to 8% instead of 5%, which of course puts the forward at a premium to the spot and so makes the put out of the money as indicated in the label for this graph up here. This graph confirms that as the tenor gets longer, so from about a quarter of a year to just under half a year and so on as we move up this curve the put initially becomes more expensive. Then it peaks in value around 2.3 or 2.5 years, somewhere here on this point. And then it begins to decline in value, perhaps a little slowly, but declining nonetheless. Stated in the opposite, but perhaps more intuitive way, if I purchase this put while it has a five-year tenor and I just sit on it its value assuming all other variables don't change would initially increase as time passes so as the tenor is getting shorter and therefore time is passing you can see the value here increasing but then after reaching the peak we mentioned that value begins decreasing gradually 
until it reaches its intrinsic, the option's intrinsic value at expiration, which of course would be zero in this case, since the option is exactly at the money spot at expiration. Where, for any given option, the exact inflection point occurs depends, as we saw in the earlier module, on a number of variables that cannot be summarized elegantly. elegantly. But an inflection point there will be for all European options. Stated another way, this means that theta changes sign over the life of a long enough option. With our five-year option having a positive theta as the market tends to define that term, pretty much for the first half of its life, and then having its theta turning negative towards the second half of its existence. Setting aside cases in which a large differential in rates exists, and setting the option to be exactly at the money, which we do by simply returning to the original terms of the sterling call and put, namely spot and strike at 1.5, rates in both currencies at 5%, and vol at 10%. We plot the graph that you see here, which is the one familiar to most option traders. But we caution you, please, to remember that it does not and cannot describe all possible option states accurately. We observe here not only the natural normal phenomenon, if you like, commonly known as time decay, which refers to the decline that takes place in the option's value as time passes and we move to the left, but also the other and critical property of time decay, at least for an at-the-money option, namely that it is slow at first and accelerates gradually with the curve, of course, becoming steeper to reflect this acceleration in time decay, rather than being linear or close to linear. You can verify on Worksheet GK that this five-year option does not lose half its initial value until its tenor has diminished to 0 0.82 years, i.e. way past the middle of its life. So theta is highest when the option is closest to maturity, a characteristic it shares with gamma and that contrasts with vega. As these various distinctions and the properties of gamma, vega, and theta have probably become quite confusing by now, we summarize them again in the simple, simple tabular form you see here. So as far as an at-the-money option is concerned, gamma and vega and theta are high whereas for an out-of-the-money or an in-the-money option those three Greeks are low. And furthermore, on the next slide, as the tenor changes, we see very clearly that for short dated options, i.e. ones approaching expiration, gamma and theta have risen usually, whereas vega has fallen over time. There is a closed-end formula for theta, but it is difficult, long, and provides few useful insights, so we will not show it. And this is all, therefore, we will discuss regarding theta and time decay, which leaves our final Greek row.
We begin by defining Rho as the options price sensitivity to a change in interest rates. Now technically, since there are two interest rates that affect an FX options price, we really should define two separate rows, which we could denote by the Greek letter Rho, setting Rho for the base currency interest rate as the partial derivative of the price with respect to the base currency interest rate and then on the right rho for the term currency interest rate following the same pattern. As discussed in our module FX Options 1, the principal effect of a change in interest rates on the price of an option is to push the forward rate up or down causing price changes in obvious but inverse directions for puts and calls. We are tempted to predict that an increase in the term currency interest rate pushes the forward higher and therefore increases the value of calls but reduces the value of puts and vice versa if the term currency interest rate declines. We are also tempted to predict that an increase in the base currency interest rate pushes the forward lower and therefore reduces the value of calls but increases the value of puts and of course vice versa if the base currency interest rate were to decline. This turns out in fact to be pretty accurate and does not for once carry a huge number of exceptions. You can verify on worksheet GK that these rules generally continue to hold for short or long dated options whether in, at or out of the money and whether vol is high or low. The table you see here illustrates the case involving our old at the money call and put, shown in blue, where we allow each interest rate over on the left in turn to rise from 5% to 8%, then to drop to 2%, while keeping the other one at 5%, as well as the scenarios where both rise to 8%, or both drop to 2%. The table confirms our intuition very precisely and suggests the additional point that what matters is not so much the absolute movement in the rates but rather the gap between them which of course started initially at zero more specifically, if RB minus RT increases, the forward decreases, causing losses for the call and gains for the puts. And when RB minus RT decreases, the forward increases, causing gains for the call and losses for the put it makes little difference to the PNL which rate moved how as long as the difference increased by 300 basis points in this table the impact will be largely the same when both rates rise or fall by the same amount and the gap therefore remains zero this table also confirms that the impact on the value of the option is pretty negligible. Thus our earlier suggestion of defining two rows, one for each currency, was technically correct, but it is easier really to just define one row which is usually done for the term currency and simply to remember that an equal and opposite movement in the other rate would generate largely the same price effect. 
rho has a closed end formula for each of the put and the call but they are not the same and here they are this is the row for the call so tenor multiplied by strike discounted at the term currency interest rate times n of d2 and now for the put negative and then essentially the same formula but please note n of minus d2 instead of n of d2 but these will not be discussed here any further before concluding this module and proceeding to the quiz it is worth comparing in a sense the magnitude of the Greeks relative to each other to figure out how a risk manager for example might prioritize among them for this comparison to have any meaning we should use movements in each factor that have roughly equal probabilities of happening for this we need to know the standard deviation over some defined time interval of each factor and specifically of spot the base currency and the term currency interest rates and vol itself we will then simulate a movement in each of these factors having some fixed defined probability while keeping the other factors constant note that we did not mention tenor in this discussion because tenor as hinted previously is different from the other Greeks in that its changes are completely deterministic there is no doubt as to the probability that an options life will become one day shorter between today and tomorrow now none of the standard deviations we are searching for is constant over time nor is it the same under all market conditions but reasonable estimates for these over an arbitrary let's say one month holding period observation period and provided market conditions are relatively normal might be as follows perhaps three percent for spot an absolute one percent for vol and about 50 basis points for the interest rates for now please ignore the signs we remind you that the interpretation of standard deviation in the case of assets or items that are normally distributed is that a movement a change in excess of the amount specified would be expected to occur only some 16 percent of the time or roughly one time in six so to illustrate when we say in the cell towards the left that the monthly standard deviation for spot is three percent we mean that changes in the value of spot in excess of three percent within a month would be expected to occur only one time in six one month in six similarly when we say that the monthly standard deviation of vol is one percent we mean that for vol to move upward by more than one percent absolute one percent over the course of one month should only happen one month in six please review our modules on financial math if you need a refresher of this concept now just before filling in the table we need to justify the signs that you see in the top row since we are focusing on a trader who is short a six month strike 150 sterling call you should have no difficulty confirming that adverse movements from this traders perspective who is short a call adverse movements would include an increase in spot hence the plus sign also an increase in vol hence the plus sign 
and an increase in the term currency, hence the plus sign, but a decrease, a reduction in the base currency interest rate. Finally, we are ready to use Worksheet GK as ever to calculate the impact of each of these defined adverse movements on the 150 strike six month sterling call. We will not show the calculations on GK as usual you can confirm them but here are the results. Note the far larger magnitude of the spot movement and the negligible impact of the interest rate movements. 0 0.026 for the spot versus only 0 0.0018 and 0 0.019 for the interest rate movements. You should very quickly see how the simple probabilistic approach can actually be very useful in helping the risk manager better to quantify and to prioritize the risks of an options book and also in the determination of ri which risks must be hedged and perhaps subjected to limits versus which ones can be taken a little less seriously. This concludes our chapter 5.